Welcome to Everyday Economics, the podcast that helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, president of the 501c3 nonprofit, nonpartisan Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics, the production of America's Talking Network. You can check out all of our great podcasts at americastalking.com. To support Everyday Economics, please make your tax-deductible charitable contribution by clicking the link in the show description. We are recording this episode on July 24th. And join me as always, Dr. Orfe Dibangi, PhD economist. Dr. O, numbers are rolling in. You know, of course, you know, we're no shortage of economic data. The inflation rate for June, it fell. And the conversations around recessions seem to be backtracking a bit right now. What's driving that? Yeah, absolutely. Inflation falling, recession risk recedes. Um, isn't that exactly what the Fed had uh, been planning or trying to do since we, we started this whole thing? You know, we hear from uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell all the time, uh, and he always kind of says the same thing. Uh, he says that low restoring price stability is essential to set the stage for achieving maximum employment and stable prices over the long run. Right. In other words, you know, low and stable, low, stable and predictable inflation is absolutely crucial for uh, achieving sustainable economic growth, for stable job growth, for sustainable increases in incomes over time. You know, if you have inflation that's way too high, then, you know, businesses can't plan appropriately. Households get, uh, you know, households incomes adjusted for inflation or purchasing power get eaten up really fast. And so you just can't get an economy to to continue to grow. Uh, and so it was crucial to bring down inflation to a level that was uh, that was consistent with sustainable economic growth. So it's not surprising to me that as inflation moderates, recession risk is receding. You know, now, unfortunately, you have some people that are saying, well, hold on a second. You know, the only reason inflation is coming down is because the economy is cooling so rapidly that we may end up in a recession. Yes, in the past, that's happened. It's happened not because it's happened mostly because the Fed just went too far. Right. The Fed has been acting to bring down inflation and inflation is coming down. And hopefully the, this time around, the Fed is not going to hike one too many times. Right. And bring us into that recession, because I think inflation is on the path to falling below the Fred's target by some time in 2024. At least that's the current path. Now, of course, you also have people who are saying, well, because inflation has come down, real wages, wages adjusted for inflation have increased. Real purchasing power has increased. And maybe just maybe the consumer is going to go out there with that additional purchasing power and spend more which would cause the in inflation to start uh, reaccelerating. That's a common argument that I hear. But really, you know, if you look at if you look at real wages for a very long period of time, right, over time, you learn basically you see very much that, you know, as you know, the movement of real wages over time is very highly positively correlated with the movement of America of the American savings rate. In other words, you know, when real wages increase, Americans tend to save a larger share of their income. And when real wages decrease, Americans tend to save less. And so uh, I expect that as real wages increase, uh, you know, you'll see the savings rate increase, which is also something the Fed wants to see, right? People spe- saving more of that additional increase in purchasing power. And, uh, and of course, you know, that means they're not out there spending more and inflation reaccelerating like some believe it would with an increase in, in purchasing power. So, so that's kind of my thoughts on this. I think we're in a situation where we're exactly where we want it to be, which is consumers are not running out of steam. Inflation has come down, right? Mostly food, energy prices, food st- stabilizing, moderating, food inflation moderating, energy stable, steady, because basically, you know, OPEC unfortunately is offsetting any decline in food and energy prices by cutting production. 
So, so energy steady and stabilizing. Good services inflation has come down substantially since it peaked, since global supply chain issues, kind of uh, the key driver of uh, higher inflation peaked in December of 2021 and have been normalizing since. So goods inflation also improving, right? And we saw that, right? We saw improving as supply chain issues improve. And then uh, finally, housing being a drag on core services, and that's expected to continue. And as we see housing more and more of a drag on core services, you know, uh, you, we're likely to see core inflation come down substantially. And so, yeah, my outlook is very positive. I expect inflation to continue to moderate. I expect the U.S. economy to potentially avoid a recession so long as the Fed doesn't go too far as we progress. You know, we have another rate hike this week and then we'll see. I appreciate the download for Orfe Devungi. This has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other quality podcasts at americastalking.com. 